Aloha, I'm McKenna Maduli. Welcome to the second edition of PTC TV. If you missed yesterday's program, you can watch it online at ptc.org slash ptc20. Enjoy today's show. The PTC 20 mobile app now has new features, including messaging and meeting scheduling, along with all the key information about the annual conference. Download the PTC 20 mobile app to learn more about the conference program, sponsors, locations of meeting suites, connect and message with PTC 20 attendees, and much more. Search for PTC 20 in your app store or in Google Play. Downloading the app will make your PTC 20 experience a seamless, on-the-go success. To register or to pick up your PTC20 badge and registration materials, visit the registration booth located in the Coral Lounge on the sixth floor of the Mid-Pacific Conference Center. Registration is open every day starting at 8 a.m. Remember to bring a valid form of photo identification to claim your registration badge and materials. PTC20 is made possible in part by the generous contributions of our sponsors. Mahalo to NTT Global Data Centers for their diamond sponsorship of PTC20. Get ready to run, lace up your shoes and join your fellow PTC20 attendees for a scenic 3.1 mile run that begins at the Great Lawn of the Hilton Hawaiian Village. All proceeds from the event will support Make-A-Wish Hawaii in granting wishes for children with critical illnesses. Learn more at ptc.org 5k. Welcome to today's edition of What's Happening Today at PTC 20 for Monday, January 20th. Thank you to everyone who joined us at last night's opening reception brought to you by PTC 20 Diamond Sponsor, NTT Global Data Centers. Get the morning started with the Power Women Breakfast Series in the top of ballrooms at the top of tower. Paul Hastings' Tara Johnson leads us on the topic of the changing digital landscape, challenges and opportunities. Janet Hernandez, president of Telecommunications Management Group, TMG. Jeanette Kennedy, Regulatory Affairs Manager for Loon. And Lynn Smullen, Division Vice President at Verizon Partner Solutions, explore the challenges and opportunities facing communication regulators in terms of rapidly changing technologies. PTC 20 Center Stage continues the conversation at 9.10 with NTT's keynote, enabling a connected future for 2020 and beyond. NTT leaders Tetsuya Shoji, President and CEO of NTT Communications, Masaaki Morabashi, Senior Executive Vice President, ICT Infrastructure Services for NTT Limited, and Doug Adams, Chief Executive Officer of newly launched NTT Global Data Centers, will share recent updates about the company's ICT services offerings, introducing the Global Data Centers division that is now the world's third largest data center operator. At 940, RBC Capital Markets Jonathan Atkin moderates a panel examining global infrastructure investment with Bruno Lopez, Group CEO and Director of ST Telemedia Global Data Centers, Kristen O'Connor Leong, Senior Vice President for GIC Real Estate, Steve Smith, Managing Director with GI Partners, and Waldemar Schlezak, Managing Director of Digital Infrastructure at KKR. Northern Sky Research's Chris Baugh will interview Campbell McFarlane, President of One Web Enterprise Solutions, about the LEO constellation wave at 1010. This interview will discuss how, via large constellations of satellites, LEOs will fundamentally change the telecom dynamic. 
At 10.45, the Center Stage morning sessions will continue with a panel discussion of diversity and inclusion as a business imperative and strategic asset. Gina Hasbudleri, VP of Open Connect Partner Engagement with Netflix, and Amy Marks, Chief Executive Officer for Excite Modular, will join Tara Johnsa, partner with Paul Hestings, LLP, to address the systematic issues, discuss recent developments, and explore progress yet to be achieved and how we can get there. At 1110, PTC will recognize the 2020 PTC Young Scholar Program and Research Award recipients, the Yale M. Bronstein Student Award, and the Mehru Jusawalia Research Award. Be sure to join us to recognize these outstanding scholars for their work. Gary Kim will moderate a panel of diverse industry experts, including Dean Bubbly, Director for Disruptive Analysis, John Ghirardelli, Director of U.S. Innovation at American Tower Corporation, Rami Katrib, CEO and founder of Digital Film Tree, Yang Yang, co-director and professor, School of Information Science and Technology, SHIFT, and Shanghai Tech University for a discussion of 5G network implications at 11.25 to wrap up our morning sessions. During the lunch break, be sure to stop by the PTC Hub for the Monday Lightning Talk Lunch Sessions. These 15-minute sessions include Are Mobile Phones Dangerous to Your Health? Your Next Generation Future, What Changes and Why? Beyond the Cross Connect and Cloud, Fog, Edge and 5G, What and Why? After lunch, be sure to join us in the Topo Ballroom PTC 20 Center Stage Afternoon Sessions, continuing at 2 p.m. with Broadband and 5G for IoT, How Will the Promise Be Delivered? with Facebook's Robert Pepper serving as moderator and panelists along with a distinguished panel featuring June Murai, Professor, Faculty of Environment and Information Studies at Keio University, Senji Ninomiya, Deputy Director General for ICT, R&D and Cybersecurity Policy for Japan's Ministry of Internal Affairs and Communications, Trisha Pauletta, a partner with Harris, Wilshire and Granis LLP, and David Villiard, Deputy Director, National Communications and Coordination Branch, CISA Integrated Operations Coordination Center with the Department of Homeland Security. Next on the agenda will be a presentation on building an ecosystem of infrastructure for Pacific nations by the founder and CEO of Pacific Broadband Satellites, Christian Paturo, beginning at 2.25. Rounding out the afternoon for the Monday center stage sessions at 3.45 p.m. will be Cloud Infrastructure Insights as Oppenheimer's Tim Horan leads panelist Michael Faust, chairman of Chin Data Group, Craig Scoggle, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director from NEX, DC, Chris Sharp, Chief Technology Officer at Digital Realty, and Toby Williams, Head of Products for U Networks. This evening, join PTC to celebrate your industry peers at the PTC Awards 2020, which begins at 5 p.m. in the Tapa Towers, Tapa Ballroom 2. This fundraiser honors leaders and companies in their efforts to improve the connection and communication among people and firms in the Pacific region. You can directly support PTC's mission and key community outreach initiatives by purchasing a ticket to PTC's signature fundraising event, the PTC Awards 2020. Please visit ptc.org slash awards for more information. After the ceremonies end, join awards recipients and attendees at the official after party sponsored by PCCW Global. To attend, you must have either attended PTC Awards 2020 or been invited by PCCW Global. PTC 20 offers a packed schedule, so thanks for joining us for what's happening today. We hope it helps you take advantage of the sessions and events available. We'll see you tomorrow with more details and insights for Tuesday, January 21st. PTC 20 is made possible in part by the generous contributions of our sponsors. Mahalo to each of the PTC 20 Platinum sponsors. Thank you for your support.
The PTC Hub is the central gathering place of PTC 20, featuring 15-minute lightning talks, PTC 20 exhibitors, meeting cubicles and tables, session coffee breaks, conference lunches, a professional headshot station, laptop stops, literature racks, and more. The PTC Hub is open to the public Sunday through Wednesday, located in Coral Ballrooms 3, 4, and 5 of the Mid-Pacific Conference Center. Access the PTC Hub by presenting your PTC 20 badge or by providing a business card at the entrance. Come learn, meet, and network with conference attendees in the PTC Hub. The PTC Secretariat is conveniently located in C Pearl 3 on the sixth floor of the Mid-Pacific Conference Center. For assistance from a Secretariat member, please visit C Pearl 3. Also Connect is a software-defined interconnect platform that makes connecting business to business, site to site, cloud to cloud, very easy, very effective, using predictable high-speed private connectivity in an automated environment. It enables a real-time on-demand platform where enterprise customers and also carriers can order and provision services anywhere across the platform globally. PCCW Global's IP network, which spans 150 countries, is ranked in the top five for IP peering consistently. Enterprise today are now beginning to adopt more and more of their innovation through SaaS applications or public cloud providers. And trying to transmit large amounts of data over the public internet is dangerous and expensive. It's in fact imperative that you adopt a solution or a platform that allows you to control the direct connection to those cloud providers and that's what Console Connect delivers. It's giving businesses a high degree of flexibility in the way that they're building and using their network. Literally this can be done once you're on the platform within a matter of seconds and a couple of clicks. Hi, I'm Gary Kim with PTC TV, and I'm here today with uh, two gentlemen from NTT Global Data Centers, Joe Goldsmith and Steve Manos. Mm -hmm. Guys, thanks for joining us. Appreciate thanks, you being here. We appreciate you having uh, us. Joe, the first thing from a high level perspective, what are clients asking you for? So, um, just to sort of set the stage, I, I think the days of that static workload, that static compute with a very predictive consumption is, is gone. Um, what we're seeing now is we're seeing a lot of dynamics in utilization. We're seeing a lot of customers that they're delivering their product or service via the data center infrastructure. And so uh, whether it's storage or whether it's uh, software as a service or, or a, a native cloud, um, and thus the, the utilization and the consumption of that compute is all over the map. So uh, when you ask the customer, how much capacity do you need? They say, well, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it, it's going to change. It's going to be between here and here. We need to make sure that you as the provider have the ability to scale to meet my needs uh, whenever I need it. So you need to move quickly. We need to tip up infrastructure very quickly in order to make sure that we can capture their requirement because they're out there winning business and they're using that infrastructure to go make money for the firm. I would assume that the, your volume and dimensioning tasks have become much more difficult since we've moved from sort of traditional corporate enterprise data center needs to application providers because they often can't predict what the demand is going to be. I mean, is that what you're seeing? That's absolutely right. If you think of the data center uh, world 10 years ago, you were seeing uh, two megawatts being built, and, and maybe a customer might use that over some period of time. Two megawatts now is is sort of nothing in the broader scheme of that of that service provider that you talked about. And so now they're talking about uh, 10 megawatts, 20 megawatts. And the other thing that the that the customers want to see is that you've got runway to that scale. They want to see a campus. In the old world, a building was sufficient, and maybe it could yield six megawatts. Nowadays, if you don't have line of sight to 20 to 30 to 50 and beyond, then that's a that's a, a hindrance to their business because then they have to go look elsewhere. So being able to scale at that level has become really critical. Uh, can you sort of quantify sort of percentage of customers in terms of bare wire, I need to own the entire server versus, yeah, it's virtualized, so just give me the resources I need. I don't actually have to have my own dedicated servers. 
It, Steve, I'll, I'll defer to you on, on some of this, but my sense is that <clears throat> almost everybody is in a hybrid environment right now mm -hmm. where they're Absolutely. running some baseline infrastructure and then they're utilizing uh, a cloud service uh, as an augment to that. Yep. No, I mean, that's exactly what it is. I think, you know, from our standpoint, it's, I wouldn't say, I, I don't know if you can put a percentage on that per se, but, but I would say that, uh, I mean, I think you're spot on as far as that goes, yeah. Yeah. Other trends in the industry that you may be seeing at the moment? Um, you know, as as a provider, you know, some of the trends that we're seeing is, or at least from, from our standpoint, it's, you know, we we get we, we have to have you know what people want, where they want it, when they want it, right? So from our standpoint, it's, um, you know, we've got you know three or three uh, markets right now. Right? We've got Virginia, we've got Texas, we've got uh, uh, California, right? It's our customers are saying, well, you know. What else do you got? You got to, you know, we've got to expand. So we're putting in, you know, four additional markets uh, this year. We've got Chicago coming out of the ground. We've got um, Santa Clara, you know, uh, coming out, coming Oregon. out of the ground. Hillsborough, Oregon, and, right. and one other one that we're about to announce as well. So um, I think in my world, you know, uh, I head up the, the hyperscale team uh, for the U.S. So the trends we're seeing with them are not only new markets, but also we're growing in pre-existing markets, right? Uh, take Northern Virginia and Santa Clara, for instance, right? Northern Virginia, everybody still needs to grow and expand in those, you know, in those areas. So for us, we've got obviously VA1 through VA3, we've got fully built. We've got VA4 that's built now, 32 megawatts. We've got VA5 um, that's that's well underway, you know, out of the ground. Ashburn. Um, Ashburn, <laughs> right. Um, so you've got 64 megawatts that we've got there. And then we've got, like like Joe was saying, we've got this long runway. Um, we've got a 78-acre uh, campus there. So we've got a long runway there for, for those folks. And I think that <clears throat> Silicon Valley is a little different, right? Silicon Valley, I think, is capacity constrained. So I think it's great for us, you know, as a, as a company to have 16 megawatts coming out of the ground there. Um, and kind of a, I, I guess, an, an, a great aspect to that too is, um, you know, the fact that it's going to be the first uh, earthquake-resistant data center in that market. So, gives our customers peace of mind, uh, which is nice. But I, I think another trend that we're seeing is, again, going back to that sort of capacity management uh, concept. Uh, we've got uh, some of our larger customers, sort of that, sort of that top ten uh, in that scale, global, hyperscale, whatever you might want to call it, uh, and, and they say. I want to know that that I can have in in two years my own building. Yeah. I want my own building. I want it right there. Yeah. And so the the commitment to land banking and and the campus environment for us has really become very compelling because we can now point out we've got the depth of, of capital access. Right. This isn't a a business where we need to go scurry around and go try to raise some funding or go take some debt in order to be able to go deliver. Mm -hmm. We go to our capital pool that's been allocated and we'll tip that up. And in some cases that customer might say, I just want shell and core. I'll, yeah. I'll take it and then I'll build it out as I go on an incremental basis. Or frankly, now we're behind. We need to build the whole thing out and yeah. we need, and, and our, our load package is generally a two story 36 or 32 megawatt building. and. If you think about the data center business five years ago, 10 years ago, <coughs> excuse me, that was a ton of capacity. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, of course, as you mentioned, Ashburn, Virginia, and mm -hmm. some of these other markets, sure. that's being consumed. Yep. Now, your customer base and owner are global. Correct. I assume, then you guys have come out of the US market, but I assume you've got plans for global connectivity because your customers have got to be asking you for that now. Thanks for the softball here. <laughs> <laughs> NTT, of course, the legacy of the business is it's a network and telecommunications provider. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of the data center as that foundation layer, the very first thing we want to layer on top in terms of a product or service is that, that access to the NTT global network. Mm -hmm. So every one of the data centers in the United States has access to the NTT global network, which of course all of the other data centers throughout the global portfolio have the same. Mm -hmm. And so we've now created created that sort of ease of access point, whether it's from the US to Asia, the US to, uh, to Europe, et cetera. And so when you think about uh, the portfolio of NTT companies, not only is it the network, but it's the, uh, the, the products and services that sit on top of that, whether it's data security, uh, fit out infrastructure, provisioning of equipment, uh, for example, if you need to go tip up a, a network node in um, in Singapore and you're an American-based business, that could be very daunting. We'll take that, we'll run with that, you'll give us that rack profile, we'll go provision that equipment in country, mm -hmm. tip it up, and hand it to you. 
And so the, the foundation layer of the data center is, of course, the, 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 the piece that allows it all to, um, to, to uh, evolve. But then when you start talking about the legacy of NTT uh, affiliate companies and products and services on top of that, it's a really neat, finished uh, capabilities service. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, thanks very much for sharing your views. Very informative. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for watching PTC TV. Thank you. PTC 20 is made possible in part by the generous contributions of our sponsors. Mahalo to each of the PTC 20 gold sponsors. Thank you for your support. Wireless internet access is available throughout the Hilton Hawaiian Village at the following locations. Mid-Pacific Conference Center, Kalia Conference Center, Tapa Conference Center, Superpool, Tapa Pool and Bar, and Starbucks. Wired and wireless internet access is also available in all Hilton sleeping rooms that were reserved in the PTC room block. Please check your email for your promotional code, which is also printed on your name badge. This code will be active during PTC 20 and is good for up to four devices. and beyond opening reception. A great way for everyone to network, connect, and kick off the annual conference. See, I've been to PTC for 10 times. Right. I have done PTC five times, five times. Five times. Five times. Uh, just two times. This is my second one. I've been here for 35 years. Frankly speaking, uh, of course I did come here to see you, but in other hand, uh, I went to collect the information from around the world, you know? The networking is fantastic. Anybody who's anybody in our industry is in Hawaii today. One reason is we get to see most of our customers here in one spot in the Pacific Islands. Um, it's a good chance to meet new people and new networking. And then of course the weather because I'm from upstate New York, so it's blizzarding there now. <laughs> what a great party. A little Hawaiian culture, lots of great food, and I'm sure some great connections made. Have a great week at PTC 20 everyone. Start your morning at the Power Women Breakfast Series, featuring a lineup of the industry's leading ladies. Sponsored by Verizon, the breakfast will be held in Tapa Tower, Tapa Ballroom 2. Monday's topic of discussion will be the challenges and opportunities presented by the changing digital landscape. Tuesday will examine the Business Roundtable's new model that incorporates environment, social, and governance ESG, risks, and opportunities. All conference attendees are welcome to attend. 
Be sure to join us in Topa Ballroom 2 for PTC 20 Center Stage Sessions for a vision into 2020 and beyond. Connecting with the PTC community is easy. Follow PTC on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Join the conversation online and use hashtag PTC20. We can't wait to see what you're learning, who you're meeting, or the great fun you're having. A trusted partner focused on delivering continuous innovation with exceptional customer experience. In the world of digital business, connections are everything. Count on CenturyLink to connect with a growing network of about 450,000 route miles of fiber globally and services in over 60 countries, CenturyLink offers the reach and capabilities needed to engage customers. DR Fortress, located in Honolulu, is Hawaii's largest carrier neutral data center and cloud computing services provider. Our mission is to provide operational resiliency reliability, and scalability for our customers' mission-critical systems so they can focus on their core business. DR Fortress provides the highest level of physical security with 24 by 7 manned security guards and CCTV surveillance. The DR Fortress facility is engineered with advanced and redundant electrical and cooling systems designed to support the latest high power density servers. Our 50,000 square foot data center is located well outside flood and extended tsunami zones and has been built to withstand natural disasters. With 500 cabinets and private cages available to customers, DR Fortress is the largest data center provider in the state. Contact us today for more information or to arrange a free facility tour. Hi, my name's Elaine Stafford. I'm with DRG Undersea Consulting. Welcome to PTC 20. It's really a pleasure today to be here with Amy Marks, CEO of Excite Modular. I've known Amy for many years since she first very successfully built some cable stations in Africa for a project, Seacom, that I was working on almost a decade ago. So Amy, it's More really- More than a decade ago. <laughs> I don't want to admit time. It's really a pleasure to be back here again today with you and to have this opportunity to uh, coach you into sharing some wonderful insights to everybody watching this um, snippet on TV. So <clears throat> let me start by asking Amy just to share with us some of her more recent successes since the time that she and I first worked together on CCOM. Yes, so at Excite, we have had some really great success in building cable landing stations. We just finished our 17th building in the Pacific Islands um, with Coral Sea Cable System and also PNG there. Uh, we've just uh, about to finish six buildings in the Philippines for PLCN, uh, also the half roof systems, and then some other um, small data centers that are going on. So we've had it. We've been real busy in the last couple of years for well, Mexite. It's exciting. I know it is exciting. But you have another branch of your business. We do. Which I don't know so much about, and I'm guessing maybe there are a lot of people here at PTC that don't know much about it either. So. Tell us a little bit about your consulting arm. I think it's funny that most people don't recognize that we actually have two divisions of our company. We have this um, critical infrastructure building, design build side, where we do the cable landing stations and the data centers and PFE shelters, ILA huts. But then we also are recognized as the global prefabrication experts for large scale buildings. So things like high rise buildings or multi-billion dollar hospitals or big data centers, big um, hotels and things like that, where we work with large end users and construction companies to help them enable and optimize prefabrication across many different systems. So that's really where the queen of prefab came from, um, that we work with lots of these companies to help them actually just get more productive with industrialized construction and modern methods of construction. So it's funny, I always say in some cases I sit at the top of the food chain. Uh, we work with owners that are very large on very large projects. And then sometimes we're sort of in this industry, I, I don't like to say we're at the bottom of the food chain, but we're sort of at the end of the process um, with some of the smaller value um, buildings of part of the systems that we do. But yes. So Amy, I think everybody who knows you knows that you're a super enthusiastic <laughs> contributor to any project that you work on and very entrepreneurial. 
um, I have the sneaking suspicion that you've been planning some newer and better things for Excite. We is that are. true? It what, is. Can you share anything? <laughs> I can share a little bit. Um, so we have a press release coming out this week. Um, we've just formed a major strategic alliance with a very large design manufacturer and construction company that has a um, significant amount of manufacturing space and um, uh, they have about a million square feet of design, uh, sorry, of, con of manufacturing space as well as a very, very robust design uh, process um, and software. So uh, we'll be talking about the Strategic Alliance and transitioning our business over to that business. Um, we'll still be caring and feeding for Excite and I'll still be involved and our team will be there. But we will really enhance for our clients the, uh, the, the quality of our build program and the capabilities from a design, manufacturer, and construct side. So we're real excited about that. So then today, tomorrow, however it evolves, how do you differentiate what Excite does versus more traditional ways of building cable stations and data centers? You know, it's funny, I think we've always been a little different. You know, that's, if you meet us, you know we're different. We're very consultative and that probably comes from our consulting side where we really try to not just respond to people's requirements, especially when they're so fluid in this industry, but we like to be very consultative in helping people understand what their choices are and how these buildings can really scale, um, how these can be very much more robust buildings, how they really are buildings and they shouldn't be containers and we shouldn't be looking at, you know, um, substandard metal boxes. But we, I feel like we're really different because by nature we're builders and we're consultants and we're, we've been always vendor neutral and agnostic to the materials inside or equipment inside of our buildings. So I feel like we've always, you know, whether you know that we're very aggressive and like making sure that we get the right things for our clients, but um, I think that sets us apart. You know, you can. I was I was just saying one of the owners was making fun of me that he can always reach me on my phone 24 hours a day, and that I should, you know, he's like, what kind of a business when the CEO answers the phone in the middle of the night? And I said that's just always who we are. You know, we're we're just so responsive and we want our clients to be happy regardless of, you know, um, if we have to even like keep informing them of what the right thing is. You know, we we're I think we're always just looking to make things a little bit better. Well, that's good. Um, it sounds like that may not be your biggest challenge, but it is a challenge to balance your personal life if people <laughs> are calling you in the middle of the night. It's a challenge. But the cable stations in the business that I'm in are one of the most um, difficult things to get done on time because of all the local issues that are involved in yes. permitting and construction. Any place you have a wor uh, work where government can influence your ability to get the job done, it gets harder and harder. Right. What's the biggest challenge in your line of business as it relates to the undersea cables? You know, it's interesting. I think I think last year when we were here at the show, um, when I was on the panel, I asked people to raise their hands if they were experts on the dry side of this business, on the terrestrial side of this business. And very few, under I think it was under five people in a room full of 400 people actually raised their hands. And I think the genesis of most in this industry is from the wet side of the business. And that's actually also where the highest percentage of cost on these projects are, is from the wet side of the business. So actually one of the CEOs of one of the, of the suppliers said recently to me, or actually it was at that show, we actually look at the risk stack in this industry based on value. And, and the cable station itself, as, in terms of value, is the smallest part of the system but it is a very risky portion of the system when you're talking about regulatory agencies, about permitting, about building in foreign countries or building in places you've never built before. And most people when they build conventionally have never built a cable landing station before and they'll probably never build one again so they don't really have a, an alliance for the industry. I think that's a challenge. I think just because, especially now with sort of the third party contracts with a lot of the OTTs, I always like to say just because you push risk onto somebody else doesn't make risk go away, right? So if you can, we can focus on actually solving for risk, regardless in the, the stack how the values work out. Risk is risk, right? It, it really, if you can solve for it and put the smartest people in the project early on to remove those constraints, we would all be better off. And I think we in this industry are too focused on insulating ourselves through contracts as opposed to um, looking at things logically and collaborating on shared risk and reward um, like they do in other industries. So that's sort of a factor of our insulation in the, in the do industry. Do you see the new alliance helping in that regard or is that just another step that you need to take forward? 
I think for us, the great thing about it is they're not from the industry. So they um, they have actually been um, at the top of their game in the modular manufacturing space for other high tech industries. And so what happens when you get people in diversity and thought, right? So we always talk about DNI. For me, it's always about diversity and thought. They've seen different kinds of contracts. They've seen different kinds of design processes. They've interacted and collaborated with lots of different stakeholders and their process is different. And so it gives us an infusion of new ideas and new people and new energy um, with credibility, right? So I think that's what's so important about it, that it's great that we're partnering with a group that's from outside of the industry with incredible capabilities um, that will really be a big infusion of passion, I think, and, and actually experience. And new ideas. And new experience. ideas. Okay. Proven ideas, like not even new stuff, just stuff that we know works in wow. other spaces. All right. So you mentioned diversity, and that's exactly one thing that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, but diversity in a different sense than we just you just mentioned. You've been a leader, a contributor in the submarine cable industry to try and fostering, to try to foster diversity and inclusion in the workforce. Right. Because it's our industry, as you can tell by my gray hair, is aging. And, and mine. Just the fact that we're two women doesn't mean that there are a lot of women in this industry. Right. So I know you've done a lot of thinking about diversity and inclusion in our industry. If you had one wish for what every manager in this industry would do, to try and foster more diversity and inclusion right. in the industry, what would that wish be? I think we're a little bit too focused on this whole notion of internal mentorship within our own companies that we've got to like bring up women through the ranks and we've got to focus on them. When there's a really a whole ecosystem of successful women and, and people of diverse populations out there, I'm just using women as an example, right? So. I feel like if you're a manager, my wish for you is to not just look internally at what you can do within your own company and, and who you can bring in, but there are a lot of interactions that I as a woman CEO can have with people within your company where if you don't have a woman CEO and you don't have women leadership, by working with a company like us, you're giving all those women that you're trying to show a path to someone to look at and say, that woman, that, that's what a CEO looks like. That's what a woman who, nego that's what a negotiator looks like. It looks like her. That's what a tough talking, technical person who knows their stuff looks like. So I wish for them to really think outside just this whole notion of mentorship internal and support an ecosystem that actually gives people um, vision to look at and see what, what could be reflected in their own careers if we really just enabled that a little bit more. So supply chain diversity programs would help a little bit more and actually putting some effort into those would be good. So um, I guess that's not there's not a better place to end than perhaps just there, because that's a really um, compelling kind of thought that we should all speak, uh, think about a little bit more. But before we sign off, and I say thank you for sharing your ideas, was there any last thing you'd like to share with those who are watching this about your job or the industry or where you see us going in 20, beyond 2020? I think if we don't really think about collaborating. And I don't mean, by the way, I don't believe there's true collaboration without conflict. So I don't think collaborating means just sharing our ideas. I think we have to really start collaborating and bringing in people from other industries to understand what works, what doesn't work. How can we do different procurement methodologies? How do we look at innovation? How do we process things? How do we look at risk? I think we're doing ourselves a disservice if we don't start learning from others outside of our space to look to to really figure out how to collaborate better. And I think if we don't start doing that, we're just, we're sort of like eating ourselves from the inside, you know, um, where we're really cannibalizing ourselves um, and that puts us at risk. So I think it's almost like we're all in the same boat, right? Have you ever seen that picture? And there's a hole in the boat and the guy at the top, who's the, maybe the content provider is like, everything's great up here. And at the bottom, you've got guys bailing out and it looks very different down at their world. But the bottom line is we're all in the same boat, right? Like yeah. we're all going down if we don't fix this. So I think we have to really start thinking about solutions. Um, or else we're, go we're going to be disrupted as an industry. We're probably already on that path. Um, but we're going we're gonna to have some real challenges if we don't really start thinking differently. Well, truer words were never said. So thank you very much, Amy. Thank you, Elaine. This is my pleasure. pleasure. Yes, yes, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Stop by the PTC membership table at the top of bar for an opportunity to win a fabulous prize and learn more about PTC membership benefits. The PTC membership table will be open from Sunday through Tuesday, 10 a.m. until 6 p.m. 
Join Paul Hastings and the women in ICT to discuss the initiatives and activities the PTC Women's Community has planned for 2020. Make new connections and get involved. The PTC Women's Reception will be held on Tuesday from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at the Ali'i Tower Mahele Suite on the 14th floor. We look forward to seeing you there. PTC20 is made possible in part by the contributions of our sponsors. Mahalo to each of the PTC20 Silver Sponsors. Thank you for your support. Help us commemorate with purpose by joining us Monday evening for the PTC Awards 2020. Not only will you be celebrating your industry peers, PTC Awards 2020 is one way to support PTC's outreach initiatives. This fundraiser honors leaders and companies in their efforts to improve the connection and communication among people and firms in the Pacific region. To purchase tickets, please visit the PTC20 registration area or ptc.org awards. Tickets may also be purchased at the door. Continue the celebration and join PTC Awards 2020 recipients and attendees at the official after party. Boogie on down with the house band and enjoy delectable food and cocktails courtesy of PCCW Global. To attend the official after party, you must have attended the PTC Awards 2020 event or been invited by PCCW Global. Did you know that Pacific Telecommunications Council is a global nonprofit membership organization that works year round to advance the ethical development and use of information and communication technologies, ICT, to improve the quality of life in communities throughout the Pacific region? Learn more at ptc.org slash outreach dash initiatives. Mahalo to our year round sponsors for their ongoing support. Twenty years ago, the West assumed that China copied much that took place, but today the innovation in gaming, in health research, in automotive is extraordinary. As Chiora, we're there to help international businesses gain access to this amazing market. Nokia is taking light to the limit with our trailblazing, super coherent, photonic service engine three. It's the shape of things to come, lighting the way to a new approach that takes optical networking to the limit of physics. All thanks to our groundbreaking new chip, engineered with the only algorithm proven to approach the theoretical capacity limit of optical fiber. Here are your headlines for Monday, January 20th. 
PTC's Board of Governors elected its 2020 officers over the weekend. Timothy Logue, Senior Director for Talis Alenia Space, was re-elected President of PTC and Chair of the Board of Governors. Sean Bergen, Co-Founder and President of AP Telecom, was re-elected Vice President. Bruce Drake was also elected Vice President. Greg Daphner, Chief Executive Officer of Gapseat, was re-elected as Secretary. And Stephen Ho, CEO of Cidic Telecom CPC, was elected Treasurer. Congratulations to all of the officers. In data center news, Aligned Energy partners with Packet Fabric to expand on-demand cloud and network connectivity across its data centers, including its Ashburn, Dallas, Phoenix, and Salt Lake City data centers. Server Farm has signed a partnership to provide data center management services for one of the world's most recognizable automotive brands. Netrality Data Centers announced that Amber Caramella has joined the company as Chief Revenue Officer. Caramella will be responsible for Netrality's revenue generation strategy and execution, including overseeing sales, marketing, strategic alliances, and channel partnerships. In subsea news, Wave Business is constructing Hillsborough Data Center Ring 2. The new ring will connect up to 14 existing or planned data centers and will service seven trans-Pacific submarine cable systems, providing seamless access through a single protected dark fiber network. And in networking news, HGC deploys HGC International Marketplace with Network as a Service on its flagship data center, BDX, as well as enabling the near zero touch availability of data center services on the centralized marketplace. This underlines HGC's continuing expansion of its global data center connectivity footprint. And that's your PTC 20 News update. For PTC TV, I'm McKenna Maduli. Aloha. PTC is excited to announce a significant expansion of one of the most popular outreach initiatives. The PTC Academy will host four courses in 2020 from China to Bangkok, starting in May. Also new for 2020, the PTC Academy will be accredited for continuing education thanks to a partnership with Subtel Forum. Visit ptc.org academy to learn more. A very special mahalo to the 2019 PTC Board of Governors for their year-round leadership and support. PTC would like to take a moment to recognize the 2019 Advisory Council for their support. PTC 20 is made possible in part by the contributions of our sponsors. Mahalo to each of the PTC 20 bronze sponsors. Thank you for your support. Thank you again for watching PTC TV. Come back again tomorrow for our final episode of PTC TV at PTC 20, including recognizing the winners of the PTC Awards 2020.